I can't believe we are now approaching the last few releases of this year already. This month is of course the turn of Home Assistant 2023.10, which is definitely a smaller release, but it does add a few new additions like map marker features, new controls for fitting images to cards, as well as new integrations. But first we have even more features for displaying climate controls on our dashboards. In last month's release in 2023.9, a new More Info dialog was finally added for the climate control, which was one of the oldest and most outdated looking controls available in Home Assistant. And they basically replaced this with a brand new dialog with a super clean and modern design, which was a very welcome change. They also added new features to the tile card, which allowed you to display the mode of your thermostat right in the card for quick toggling. That has now been expanded in this release too, to support adding presets directly to the card. How many presets you can show can be controlled in the settings, and you can switch between icons, or if you have quite a few presets, then you can change it to a dropdown instead. That dropdown feature also works for select entities, such as the input select helpers, allowing you to quickly select options from a list. Pretty cool. The map card also gets an update in 2023.102 that lets you customize the way entity markers are displayed on the map, like changing the name, the value used for the label, and whether or not to include the entity in the centering for the map. While we are on the dashboard still, if you have ever tried to add an image to your dashboard using the picture entity card, you would know that getting the aspect ratio wrong when creating the card could result in some less than desirable results on your dashboard. But in this release, you now get three different modes for how the picture should be displayed in non-native aspect ratios, including contain, fill, and cover. This should make displaying images just a little bit easier, which is always welcome. Finally, this one is a little bit more of a bug fix, I guess, rather than a feature. But if you have ever tried to use a password manager with the login field of Home Assistant, more than likely you would find that it didn't work as expected by, you know, actually filling the password. Well, 2023.10 fixes that issue and you can now password manager all the things once again. As for the little things this month, the Roborock integration has received even more love and will show water and last clean sensors. Nice. The Rainbird integration now supports calendars for displaying irrigation schedules. ESP Home got an update which made Home Assistant's backups even smaller, which is always welcome. And finally, the System Bridge integration has added support for sending notifications to your PC or laptop. In terms of new integrations this month, there is seven new integrations, including SwitchBot Cloud, which is an interesting one because Home Assistant has local support for lots of SwitchBot devices, which would of course be the preferred option with it being local. But I can see this being useful for potentially being able to use new SwitchBot devices as soon as they come out but they maybe haven't received local support just yet as that tends to follow on a little bit after. There is also a private Bluetooth low energy device integration, which is supposed to help track BLE devices that change their MAC address periodically. That's definitely an interesting one to check out. Finally, there has been seven integrations moved from YAML into the UI, making them easier than ever to set up. As for breaking changes this month, this is one of the smallest breaking changes list I've ever seen, which makes sense with this being a smaller release. No big changes here, but do make sure to have a read of them for yourself, as always, just to make sure anything doesn't apply to you. And there we go, that is the Home Assistant 2023.10 release done and in the books. Only two more releases of the year to go, which is crazy. Like I say, this was a smaller release, definitely the smallest release of the year, which is completely fine. Feels like we've had huge release after huge release for a while now, so it's good for everyone to just get a little bit of a breather before the last couple of the releases of the year, which I'm sure are gonna have some great things in them. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Please drop a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next video.